my name is Brianna Hoffman, and today I will be telling you about the process of pulling a calf and the steps that lead up to that. So <coughs> let's say I'm a farmer here and I want to breed my new heifer that I just bought. So you have two different options to start with to breed your cow. The first one is artificial insemination and the second, second one is natural service. If I choose to use natural service, you will need a bull on site. And for artificial insemination, you won't need a bull on site. Artificial insemination is more effective than natural service because artificial insemination, you actually deposit it into the uterus, whereas natural service, it's all up to the bull. And they both differ in cost. The bull is however much you pay for it, um, and you have to feed it. But artificial insemination, actually, a straw semen can cost anywhere from $100 to $100,000, depending on what bull you buy it from. And you can order it off catalog or online, and it is mailed to you in this big container that is just filled with nitrogen to keep it nice and cold. Most farmers choose artificial insemination, though, since it has a 60% success rate versus natural service only has a 30% success rate. Once the heifer is bred, you have three different ways to check for the pregnancy. One way is rectal palpation, which is the most common way, and usually is done by a veterinarian. But if you're experienced enough, you can do it yourself. So the first thing they will do is they will put a gloved hand and they will lubricate their arm and they'll reach into the rectum and they push down. And when you push down inside of a cow, you can feel the uterus. And you're looking for a mass about the size of a rat or a small dog, and that'll be the fetus of the cow. And the cow needs to be a minimum of 40 days pregnant for you to be able to determine if she is pregnant or not. Another way to check is through ultrasound. Um, and you can determine if she's pregnant by a minimum of 25 days. And lastly, you can check using BioFriend, which is a blood test for cattle. And you'll send that to a lab and the results will come back in within a week. And you can tell how, if she's pregnant within 30 days. Each way is very effective, but they all differ in cost. Um, so rectal palpation can cost anywhere from $2.50 to $25 per female. Ultrasounds are anywhere from $4 to $25. And lastly, BioPrint is anywhere from $2.40 and $4 per test. It's up to the owner to decide what option is best for them. So once the heifer is determined to be pregnant, we can now officially call her a cow because she's going to be a mother. So you can be expecting anywhere from one to possibly four calves in very rare cases in about nine months. There are six different positions <coughs> that a calf can be in. This is a picture I want you guys to see. Okay, so the first one is a normal one. This is anterior presentation. This is where the front feet and the head are facing forward, and this is the easiest way for the cow to give birth. <coughs> Most likely, an experienced mother can just birth this on her own, but new mothers may need help. Um, posterior position is normal as well. Um, just sometimes it's hard to determine if it's the back legs or the front legs. <coughs> this position can be confused with head twisted back, which is a very severe case of a, nor a normal position. And most of the time, um, head twisted back position, the calf will not make it because the pelvic bone will hook on the head and it just won't make it. Um, one in another abnormal breech position that I had experience with, it's called one four leg back. It's where the leg of the calf one is forward, one is bent back, and you have to cup your hand underneath the hook in there blindly and just slowly bring it back forward and then you can start pulling. Once, sorry, next page. Okay, so if the cow is showing signs of distress or has been in labor for more than two hours, that's when you should probably intervene. So let's say my cow here has been in labor for two hours, nothing's showing yet, so I'm going to intervene. So some tools that you're gonna need before you even start to consider the fact of pulling, you're gonna need a stainless steel bucket for your warm water, iodine, noble sun scrub, or antiseptic soap, whatever you have access to, um, surgical scrub, lubricant, OB gloves, which are those big gloves that go up to your shoulder, and your OB chain and handle. Now he said chain, you got that right. Yeah, chain, use chains. <laughs> I actually like show you how to put it on in a second. Um, before you start pulling or reaching for a calf, you need to properly restrain the cow first. So most likely the cow will have a halter of some sort on. If she seems pretty calm and not too stressed out, a simple slip knot will do. And if she freaks out, slip knot, you can just pull it and the cow is loose and no injury to you. Um, and if she is thrashing around and very 
uncomfortable, you might have to restrain her to where she's laying down. And you might need another person for that. So let's say that my cow's fine, she's restrained just fine. So before you start feeling for a calf, you must disinfect the vulva and the area around it to keep infection out. We want to keep the area as clean as possible since we're probably doing this in a barn and not a clinic. Um, to rectally palpate, OB gloves and plenty of lubricant is going to be needed. you got to figure out where the placement of the calf is. Reach into the vulva with a gloved hand to find the calf's legs. And then take the chains and place them around the ankle and the fetlock. So the chains, have you ever seen those dog things? Hold on. I actually have a few. So it's not actually the correct chain, but they look a lot like this. They have two big loops on the end. You'll take it like this. You'll double it, put your fingers through it, and you'll slide it over the foreleg and the fetlock. You'll be doing this blind, by the way, too. And then you pull tight, and it won't come off and it won't cause any damage to the calf as well. So once the calf and the chain is secured, you can start pulling one leg at a time in a downward motion, that way it's not gonna get caught on the cow's pelvis. And then you're gonna keep pulling with her contractions, you wanna make sure you pull with her contractions so you don't risk tearing her uterus. And keep pulling until the calf's shoulders are all the way through, and once the calf's shoulders are all the way through, you're going to twist the calf at 180 degrees so the widest part of the calf can pass through the widest part of her pelvis. And this will make sure not to tear her uterus and that she's most comfortable. And then once the calf is turned, you can finish pulling and just let it plop on the ground. And then once the calf is out, um, you need to get it breathing because they have a mucus plugged in the back of their throat. So what you'll do is you'll stick your fingers in their mouth and pull that out. And if they don't start breathing right away, take your bucket of water that you had earlier that doesn't throw that at them. If that doesn't work, you need to start CPR. Um, how you do CPR is you'll hold their head straight up and you breathe directly into their nose and hopefully they start breathing, but CPR is usually only needed in extreme cases. Once the calf starts breathing and is taken care of, you need to check the mother, um, make sure to clear out her birth canal for any debris and ensure she is doing well and that she actually takes to her calf. Um, if the mother seems dehydrated, you can hook her up to an IV and make sure she has access to food and water. And if the mother takes well to the calf, the two can be left alone to bond together. And so pulling, in the end, pulling a calf is a very tiring procedure and can take anywhere from a half an hour to three hours to successfully pull the calf, depending on how it's positioned. And nonetheless, it is amazing to help to assist to bring a new life into the world.